Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so after a couple of weeks with the Galaxy S9, we finally have it, our 10 hidden features video. Now this is the first of uh, 20 tips and tricks. So this is the first part and part two will come out later uh, in about a week or so. So let me know what you guys think about it. My personal favorites are one, two, four, and 10. Let me know which ones are your favorites. And as always, the tradition is, if you know all of them before watching this video, then you get a thumbs up. However, if you didn't know all of them, then I get a thumbs up. All right, guys, make sure to subscribe to check out all of the coverage we have. I think by next week, we will have over 40 videos on the Galaxy S9. So if you're curious about this phone and how it compares to everything else on the market, you want to subscribe. So let's get started. All right, guys, so right away, I have to show you my favorite new feature on this phone, and that is making a video into your lock screen. Now, I love this feature. It could be any video that you have on your smartphone, whether it be a 4K one that I recorded at a nice, beautiful restaurant or whatever you want. So let's show you how to do it. So first off, what you do is, is you go into gallery and you select your video. So this was the one I wanted. And then from here, you hit the three dots in the top right. And then you set it as wallpaper. What this allows you to do is then edit the video. Now this video is exactly 15 seconds. That's why it allows me to do it set as wallpaper. If not, you're gonna take up to 15 seconds from any video you want. And so you can edit it basically. You can edit and move it along the slider on a one minute video. You can move it and take 15 seconds of that video and put it as that. And then once you would be done, then you would just set it as wallpaper and that would be it. So every time you unlock your phone now you have this nice beautiful wallpaper that definitely stands out okay so this next part is really big especially if you're new to samsung and have had androids before or iphones before and that is how to text message or email large videos or any other thing that has large file size up to two gigs without losing any quality so for instance, this video right here is going to be 340 megabits. Now that's way too big for a text message normally without losing a bunch of quality. However, you can text message this at full quality. All you do is you get whatever you want, you know, get a bunch of videos if you want, doesn't matter. And then hit share. And when you hit share, what you're going to do is at the top right here, you're going to use a link sharing. Now link sharing allows you to send up to two gigs per day. And when you tap that, you can now send it to whichever way you need to through uh, Hangouts, through Facebook, through Gmail, through email, through Instagram, through Hangouts, whatever. You can direct message it. It doesn't matter. However you want to send this, you can do it. So the really great part about this is, is that it allows you to send huge files. You can write a text message along with it, you know, like hope you like this video or whatever, it doesn't matter. And once you send that, they get it at the full quality. So how does this work? Basically you get a 24 hour link that that person can download. So this uploads. So keep in mind that the link will work better if you're on Wi-Fi, so it uploads quicker. Uh, if you're on LTE, it might take a little bit longer. But once you have that, you can text message huge videos and without losing any quality. So it solves the problem for text messaging an iPhone where the quality used to be bad because now it's perfect. However, when an iPhone still text messages you, the video still won't look as good. All right, guys, so this next hidden feature is a really great one that just came last year. And it's still one of the top ones, I would say, beneficial wise. And that is dual audio Bluetooth, which means you can actually pair two different uh, Bluetooth speakers or headphones at the same time, regardless of what brand they are. So this is how you set it up. You basically go into Bluetooth and uh, you hit the three dots right here. Once Bluetooth is on and then dual audio from here, dual audio will allow you to pair to two different devices and it's nothing special. It's just basically pairing both of them. So as I turn one on, that one's now paired. And now as I turn this one on, now this one's now paired. Now they're both paired and that's it. 
So it's just that simple, really great, easy to use, but a huge benefit for anyone that ever wanted to share their music or have a big house party, but you have two different brand of speakers, put one in the kitchen, put one in the living room, and now you can play them both at the same time. Okay guys, this next one takes hiding stuff to a whole nother level. So, if I unlock my phone with this finger, using my regular home screen. However, if I unlock my phone with this finger, I go to my secret phone. This is called the secure folder and it has been on past Samsungs before, but now what they did was, depending on which fingerprint you use, you can actually have a separate phone entirely separate. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean, any uh, anything that's on this side of the phone will not be shown on your personal side of the phone. So if you have contacts on this side of the phone, they will not be shown on uh, the regular side. If you have photos on this side of the phone, they will not be shown on the regular side. If you have an account, say you have an Instagram account or a Facebook account or a Snapchat account on this side of the phone, it will not be on the normal side of the phone. They are completely separate phones. So emails too, of course, every, everything, any app you can basically add on to here is going to be separate and you can download apps that are on this side of the phone that are not on the regular side of the phone. So this is a completely separate phone. So how do you set this up? So first you have to set up secure folder itself. Now to do that, I'm going to go back to the lock screen and security. And then I'm going to start secure folder. So you set that whole part up. Then you have to have fingerprint unlocking enabled. So at least two fingerprints in order to do this. You can do up to four. So again, just you can have your both index fingers and your thumb unlock your regular phone. But this finger right here, this middle finger will unlock this uh, secure folder, whatever you want to do it. Um, so once you have the fingerprint setup done, I'm going to go to secure folder now. And uh, you can have secure folder appear on your uh, on your regular folder list. Uh, so right there, show secure folder. It's, it will appear in your apps, but you can even change the icon. So you don't have to call it secure folder. You can call it whatever you want. So you can call it, you know, uh, love this or work or whatever you want to do. You can have it as uh, whatever you want. But when you let me show you just how to do that. Right here, customize icon. So you can customize, you can call it work, you can, you know, call it uh, nature, you can call it photos, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, whatever you want to call it, you can call it whatever you want. But in settings, you go to lock screen, or sorry, uh, you go to lock type, and then as I type in my super secret password, you enable fingerprint plus. Now what this does is it allows you to have a dedicated finger to unlock the secure folder instead of your regular phone. Really great, cool feature, and it takes a little explaining to do, but once you have it, it's a really cool feature to have because then you can have one finger unlock your regular phone and one finger unlock your secure folder. Okay, now this next feature I like to call baby proofing your phone. If you have a child or you just want to basically give your phone to someone but keep them on one screen and they can't get out, uh, this is a great feature. And I do this all the time, say if I'm babysitting, you know, you can easily just give the phone to the kid and put it on a YouTube channel or a Netflix video and they can't get out of it. So this is how you do it. You go to accessibility and then you go to dexterity and interaction. And then from here, you turn on interaction control. So what this allows you to do is basically disable everything on the phone except what they have on. And the only way to get in or out of this is by hitting the power button and the volume up button, holding it down. So let me show you how to do it. So let's go to a nice video here. We'll turn the volume down on this one. But say, you know, you want to make sure your kid didn't miss mobile weekly, because that's obviously very important. You hold down the power and volume up button and you block the whole screen and then you hit done. And now 
you want to do this in landscape. So we'll keep it in whatever mode you did do it in. But let's see. Do it this way. And then once you have that, now they can't get out. Power, volume, nothing can get out. So they can't get out of the screen. So you don't have to worry about them messing up your phone or doing anything else. You have them permanently locked into the screen and it's a great feature, especially for kids when you just want them to watch something without going anywhere crazy. All right, this next feature really helps out if you're like me and you don't have a lock screen password most of the time. So what I love about this feature is I can just immediately push the home button and it unlocks right to my phone. So by default, when you first get the phone, if you push the home button, it will turn on the screen. However, it's going to take you to the lock screen. And for me, I just want to go straight to the phone. So what you can do is go to display and then go to navigation bar and then unlock with home button. And what this allows you to do is now when you push the home button, it will immediately unlock the screen. It's a quick step, but man, does it really help out when you're, you know, have to turn your phone on and off and it just really makes everything a lot quicker. All right, now the next hidden feature is going to be in the camera and it's something new and different that I really like. And that is basically when you hold down the camera button now, you can immediately make a GIF. Now let me explain what that is and how to do it. So let's double click the power button to launch the camera. And then we're going to go into settings. And then from here, we're gonna scroll all the way down until you get to hold camera button. Now, normally this does burst mode. What that means is it takes a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, bunch of photos. No one really ever likes those because there's too many and most of them are blurry and you get one good shot maybe. So what I prefer to do is actually create a GIF. And this is really cool because now you have a mini video basically when you hold it down. So if I'm going like this, And now I have a mini video that I can send to someone. Obviously these aren't the best settings and I would do a lot better video, but it's a really cool short way to make a GIF right away and then immediately share it and send it. So I really love this feature. And again, it's something different and newer to this Samsung lineup. Okay, so for this next hidden feature, it definitely is circumstantial, but if you happen to do portrait mode, so that blur effect where it blurs out the background and you want to do something really creative with it, when you do a portrait mode, what you can do is adjust the lights behind you now. So instead of just blurring out the background, you can make the lights into hearts or stars or polygons or twinkles, whatever you want. But basically you can actually make these and adjust this. And again, you can control the blur so that it's exactly what it was originally, or you can make it really blurry a little bit and then just have those nice heart shapes. And the blurrier you make it, the more you can make out the shapes, of course. But it's just a really cool new effect that adds on to that blurring the background feature. This will look really good if you take a portrait and you have, uh, you know, a really nice lighting behind you and it'll make a really cool effect. All right, so this next hidden feature is all about the selfie and it is better known today, but you now have something called selfie focus. So this has been around uh, for the Note 8 and the S8, but now they call it selfie focus instead of selective focus. So what this allows you to do is basically if you hold it at arm's length, it will allow you to blur the image behind you. Now you can control the skin tone and the color in this just like your regular selfie, so know that. And then once you do, you get a pretty good shot. So this is the background completely blurred out. Now I will say this, I did like it more before uh, because on previous versions, you were able to edit it after the fact. So you can unblur and, and blur after the fact, on this version you can't, on the rear camera focus you can for live focus, but on this one for some reason doesn't let you. Hopefully they change that in a software update to bring it back, but really good photos if you want to have that selfie effect and you don't have anyone else to take the photo. 
All right, and for our last hidden feature, this definitely can help you out a lot in taking photos, and that is the floating shutter button. Now, the, the easy way to take this out, if you know the touch, is basically just grabbing it and taking it out. So now what this allows you to do is being able to take a photo and you don't have to reach all the way to the bottom. If you're better off taking a photo up here, well then just take a photo up here. It's just that simple. This is a floating camera button. So basically you can put it wherever you want and it's very easy to take the photo from that position. Especially if you're doing a selfie stretch, it's sometimes hard to reach all the way to the bottom, but then just put this right here where you need it and bam, you have a good photo. Now, the other way to do this, if uh, you want it just straightforward, is going down to the bottom of camera settings and turning on floating camera button. This allows you to, of course, use it right away. And it's a really great feature that saves a lot of photos. And when you want to get rid of it, you just drop it back down in the shutter. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're going to find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.